You guys are getting a glamorous tour of my bathroom because there is stuff over every wall in my room. Can you see that on screen? No. I have zero faith in this tape that I'm using. Oh, I got way too much string. I also made books. Really tiny. Today's tiny. You like the fit? It's giving, I went to summer camp. I wouldn't know, I've never been to summer camp. So I, I'm ahead of schedule for writing my own books. So today I've decided to talk about somebody else's books. It's also been a minute since I've uploaded. Um, so this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm giving the people. This is what you wanted, right? Today I'm gonna talk about the timeline of the Percy Jackson books. They're pretty straightforward, but there's a little bit of nuance. So I did wanna like sit and talk about them. Did these get out of order? No. It is too early in the video for me to have an absolute breakdown. I also did not print out two of the books. You'll see them. You'll see them. The only thing is with the most recent couple of releases, they're not super in order. And there's also nuance when it comes to like the, the non Percy Jackson, but they're still in the same world books. We'll talk about it. Slight spoilers for almost everything. If you haven't read one of the series, I would recommend specifically clicking off this video if you have not gotten to the end of the first Percy Jackson series. There'll be spoilers. If you want to know the books in order, I will have them in the comments so you can just see them. Uh, if you want to hear me talk through my reasoning, um, stick around, this should be fun. <laughs> How much tape am I wasting per book? First things first, I'm not gonna talk about like where each book takes place. Um, I don't remember when the first book, the first book came out this year, 2000 something. And um, there are references to culture from 2000 something. And the most recent book, The Chalice of the Gods, came out 2024 and it takes place in 2024. Percy has not aged that many years. So I'm not talking about that timeline. The Rick Riordan writes in such a way where it's like, whatever, wherever he is writing it in, that's the pop culture he's writing it with. And he's not gonna, he's not, he's he's not gonna be like, no, it's, it's a period piece now because it takes place 10 years ago. He doesn't care. And you know what? Neither do I. I am talking about the order of reading the books. This is my timeline. We are starting oldest to newest. My timeline's too long and I'm not gonna fix it because I'm doing this for fun. Okay? For the most part, you might be like, Abby, it can't be that nuanced. You just read one series, then the next, then the next, then the next. They have their orders. Yes, but they're specialty books. And as someone who owns some of those specialty books, I, I want to have my definitive, here's when I think they take place. And you can debate me in the comments, because again, I'm doing this for fun. <laughs> so we start with, obviously, The Lightning Thief. Um, not much to say about that one. It is the first one he released. It's gonna go here on our timeline. So tiny. The top part of the timeline is gonna be Percy Jackson specific. And then if it's like related, but not the same thing, like if they're cousins, it's gonna go under here. So you can see where they would overlap. We go straight from Lightning Thief to Sea of Monsters. Those are connected. Um, they take place about a year apart. Almost all of them take place, I think exactly a summer apart, except for Titan's Curse, which I'm pretty sure takes place during the fall. Do not quote me on that. I have only read this series all the way through twice. Abby, it's your favorite book series. I know. And I've only read through it all the way twice. Also, yeah, my angle's kind of low and I have to crouch. Maybe I'll fix it. Like, fix my angle. So we start with the first three books in Percy Jackson. We actually start with the first four. I've just only taped up the first three before fixing my angle. So we have The Lightning Thief, followed by Sea of Monsters, followed by Titan's Curse, my personal favorite, other than the last book, we'll get into it. And Battle of the Labyrinth. All right, now here is where I'm gonna start debating. And I know it's early to start debating. We'll get into it. Okay, next up on the timeline, according to the Wikipedia, I did the Wikipedia, this specific book. Um, this is the right one, right? Yeah, is The Demigod Files. I don't own this one. I have read it though. I cannot remember if it is imperative that you read this before reading The Last Olympian. I don't want to read it between this and The Last Olympian. And my reason for that is at the end of Battle of the Labyrinth, we have this really nice, like melancholy scene. It is, it's nice. There's some hope, but it also like, if you have not read this, read the end of this book, I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about it. So skip forward, I guess like a minute and a half. I don't know how long I'll be talking about this. The book ends and Percy has this like seed he got when he was on Ajigia with Calypso and he plants it and it kind of reminded, reminds him of his promise and like gives him hope for like a future and him getting to like deliver on that promise of like helping her escape or whatever, um, which he never really does. Um, shout out my man Percy, that's his one flaw. Has this nice little reflective moment, Percy does. And then Nico shows up and it's kind of like, hey, person we're friends with, but like not really. They've only been friends for the course of this book. And even that is not even like friends, it's like begrudging allies. 
So like, it's weird, but like also like they're talking about like, hey, I have a plan. I think that's Nico. He's like, hey, I have a plan. We should talk about it. And Percy's like, okay, you want some cake? Cause it's his birthday. So he offers cake, which is like, it's like this like kind of sweet moment, but like also like things are about to go down in The Last Olympian. Um, and The Last Olympian starts, I don't remember how The Last Olympian starts. I've only read it twice. I, it, it might start with Rachel. I think it starts like straight on the mission with Beckendorf. Um, either way, I like how we start, we end one book with like this like melancholy, here's where we are. And then we go straight into the next one with like this melancholy, things are about to get real, like, ah. And I don't want to throw short stories in between because they're not the same vibe. <laughs> they're goofier, they're more like, the beginning of most Percy Jackson books because the beginning of The Last Olympian isn't as goofy. I don't want to read goofy in between. But if it is important for you to read this plot wise, I don't remember what short stories are in here. I know the one with Bob is in here. So you do have to read this before reading Heroes of Olympus. All right, this is editing Abby. I did fact check the Demigod Files. All three stories you should read before The Last Olympian because all three of them have characters or plot elements that like you need to understand i think this is me after i've looked up the wikipedia page first short story is um percy and clarice do like a little side quest thing for the chariot that i think is why the apollo and Ares cabins are mad at each other so that's important to the plot of the last book um and then there's um, a scene with Charlie Beckendorf, who we absolutely love. And I remember reading the short story and really liking him in the short story, which I feel like it's important since, spoiler alert, he dies in The Last Olympian, like really early on. So I think that one's important to read. And it has the bronze dragon who guards the tree where the golden fleece is, I think. I don't remember where the dragon shows up, but I remember reading like the main series and being like, wait, how long has there been a dragon here? Short story between those two books. And the last one I thought wasn't important to the last plot. I know it had Bob and I do mention that in the video, um, but it is actually important because it has um, Ethan who is in The Last Olympian and it is important to know who he is and all of that. Um, so disregard everything I said. I made a good little stance for myself, but I was wrong in the end. If you're binging the whole series, you, like my favorite one other than Titan's Curse, because I don't want to say Titan's Curse is my favorite. My favorite character is Annabeth or Percy. I like, I like Percy too. I like them as much, but like, I really like Percy and Annabeth. And then you take Annabeth away for the entirety of a book. And I'm like, well, but to, no, no. So I don't want to say that was my favorite, even though it like shakes up the status quo the most. I guess I'm just talking about the books in general now. I like The Titan's Curse because it's like the first one that doesn't take place over summer break. It's the first time we don't have our trio on the quest. Like they're all split out because Annabeth is here. Grover's been invited to the quest. Percy's just tagging along, even though he's not supposed to be there. I love that. I love that. I like the introduction of Bianca and Nico. I love these characters. This is amazing. But also, where's Annabeth? I don't want to say it's my favorite one. So it really is a tie between those two for which one's my favorite. And again, I have read this, but it was like two years ago and I wikied when it took place and it said freedom between these two. Um, you're just getting my opinions now. After the events of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, I don't know why I'm like panting. <laughs> Apparently I got really into that speech. After the events of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, we have um, Percy Jackson's Greek Gods. This book is written by Percy read the subtext. Okay, I'm not gonna say it. This book is written by Percy. Um, and I don't know when it's supposed to take place. I know it's it's, it's when I googled it. Because <laughs> again, I did I did slight googling for these thoughts I had. Um, it was like, it's a companion guide to these. Someone on Tumblr said this the other day. They were like, I've, I've been reading these books for so long that I forgot that like, I probably thought Percy was gonna die in the last book. Like if you didn't know about the existence of Heroes of Olympus, did you think he was gonna die at the end of this book? Because that's what it says he's gonna do. Um, so this book is kind of like a spoiler for that, kind of like, hey, he's alive, but he could have just been writing it during the midst of all this, even though I don't, I don't think that's what's happening. I have not read Percy Jackson's Great Gods. I don't own it yet. It's on my list. I'm gonna like also put this one like a little higher, but like canonically read it after is my thoughts. Someone who has read this one, um, if you could tell me like, hey, I would actually read it here. Love to hear that. I'll probably end up pinning your comment above mine. <laughs> next, we get into the next series, which is not actually a Percy Jackson series, but canonically ties to Percy Jackson. So I'm gonna just put it like directly under-ish. Spoilers for Heroes of Olympus. You know how at the beginning of Heroes of Olympus, it's like Percy's been gone for this much time. Um, that's kind of my thought is like, while like while he and Annabeth are happy, the whole Kane Chronicles mess is starting to happen. 
I am pretty sure that somewhere in the Kane Chronicles, and do not quote me on this because I think this happens two different series, is, there's like a reference from like the bad guy or whatever, or like someone says, they're like, oh, you know, the Greek earth goddess is trying to take over. And so like, that's the like, this takes place at the same time as Heroes of Olympus. I, listen, there's five books in Heroes of Olympus. I'm not separating them by also reading the Kane Chronicles at the t same time. I'm gonna read it before or after. Last time I read it, I decided to read it after and I still haven't reread it. So when the Percy Jackson show is done, I'm binging two of the graphic novels that I bought. I did not buy two in order. And I'm gonna be reading the Kane Chronicles. Probably not at the same time. Anyways, so the Kane Chronicles are like, in my head canon, they're like in between here and part of Heroes of Olympus, but like it also like doesn't matter because I don't think most people are reading them at the same time. No offense to the Kane Chronicles, it's Rick Riordan's most boring release. I like them, but when you ask, like when I'm done with the series, I'm not like, dang, I really wish there was more, which is what I think for every other series he has, except for Trials of Apollo. We'll talk about Trials of Apollo. I have mixed feelings about it. Next, we're gonna be starting the Heroes of Olympus books. We're gonna start with The Lost Hero, and I will get into why the next book is not Son of Neptune, even though when you finish The Lost Hero, your first thought is, I want more Percy Jackson, give me Son of Neptune. So this is obviously written after, um, Percy's gone missing. Uh, so it would be after Greek Gods because Percy wrote Greek Gods and he couldn't do that when he's missing. Yeah, but again, have not read Greek Gods. Don't know where that takes place. What if he did write that on the run? What if he wrote that while he's like living with wolves at the beginning of Son of Neptune? Well, before Son of Neptune, during, the, during this, he's living with wolves, but we don't see him living with wolves. We see him in the next book living with wolves. What if what if he wrote that when he was living with the wolves? And I'm just, I'm just insane. And I'm just insane. Next. And this is my personal opinion. I do own this one. I have read it all the way through twice. After reading The Lost Hero, or at least before you read Mark of Athena, but here's the thing. You finish Son of Neptune, you've had an entire book with no Percy, and he's barely referenced, and they finally figure out where he is, and the next book on your roster is to read Son of Neptune, correct? You want to read from Percy's perspective again. But at the end of Son of Neptune, you are so close to what's better than getting Percy Jackson's perspective is getting Percy Jackson's perspective and having Annabeth there. That's in Mark of Athena. So you cannot read Percy's expect perspective, have him expecting to see his girlfriend again, all very excited, knowing that she's expecting to see him again, and then stop to read the Demigod Diaries. No, read the Demigod Diaries after The Lost Hero. And you have to read it after because one of the short stories is from the perspective of Leo, who you don't know yet unless you have read this book. If you've already read them, I guess you could read this first and then just binge the entire series. I don't think that's as fun. Here's my thought. You want more Percy? Read, the read this first. Read this before Son of Neptune. There is a short story about Luke and I don't care for that short story. That's my opinion. There is what I consider a like fanon, like it's canon, but it's more fan than it is a canon. Um, story written by Rick Ward and Son is the last one. It's fine, it just it is in the same tonally, so it doesn't like stick out to me as a reader. There is the aforementioned story with Leo that you need to read before Mark of Athena. And then there's a short story where Percy and Annabeth, it's like their anniversary or something, and they go to Paris after they do a quest for Hermes, and it's really cute. So yeah, um, just you get more Percy, you get more Annabeth, then you get more Percy, then you get more Percy and Annabeth. And pretty much the ill, the rest of Heroes of Olympus is in order after that, like you're not gonna break it up, I don't think, for anything, so. Watch me just leave these up here. This is like the decor in my bathroom now. It's just this insane timeline. It'd be like a Mike's Mike thing, I guess. Not that my <laughs> yarn skills are anywhere near his. Even if there were, was like, oh, here's a short story thing you're supposed to read in between these books for Heroes of Olympus, I wouldn't do it. Again, like you finish, you finish The Lost Hero, you want Percy, so you want to read this one. You can split it up with the Demigod Diaries because he's there and he's happy with Annabeth. We don't have Annabeth in this one. The next one we have Percy and Annabeth. And at the end of it, we have them falling off of a cliff. I'm not reading another book in between Mark of Athena and House of Hades. They need to make it out safely. And then, you know, you might as well finish the whole series with Blood of Olympus. So this is our timeline so far. The first four books then this one, and then read the last Olympia. Then read this, which is a longer read and it's not necessary to the plot, but it's fun, I'm guessing. I haven't read it. The other one is fun, we'll talk about it. Then the Kane Chronicles, before moving on to these, read the Demigod Diaries between Lost Hero, Son of Neptune. Okay, if you're not following me, <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> Most of this, if you like Google release order, is pretty much the release order is what you're reading. But again, we're so close to not being in release order anymore. And that's why I'm doing this. Otherwise I'd be like, people can figure it out. They'll, they're, they're smart. Next we have Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes, which there's another book after this that I'm gonna talk about. 
so I'm not gonna save that much. It's the same thing as Percy Jackson's Greek Gods, but it's with Greek heroes. I have not finished this book. I am currently reading it. It's not my like book that I'm sitting and reading, but it's like my book I'm reading while I'm babysitting and the kids asleep. Uh, the chapter that I'm reading right now is almost 100 pages. The Hercules chapter is almost 100 pages. It's a good chapter, I'm having fun, but I will procrastinate. And if I procrastinate one book, it's the poetry book that I'm also reading. But then the second book I'm procrastinating is Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes. It is fun though. Um, that is another one that's written from the perspective of Percy and he does reference um, characters. Actually, I'm gonna go grab my copy to show you because I really like some of this. Oh, and I have a nitpick. I'd like to point out that the day of recording this, I went to church. I had a great good morning with the Lord and then I came home and did this. <laughs> this, is, this is unrelated to him referencing things that happened in Heroes of Olympus. It says, what kind of name is Phineas? It sounds like a cartoon character. Rick Riordan, and I see you. Who is your favorite character? Please tell me. On, so on page 88, here's a canonical reference that this happens after Heroes of Olympus. Um, I don't wear glasses, but my buddy Jason does. Shout out Jason. We're not gonna talk about that actually. Girlfriend, Annabeth, referenced. That's a slay. She's not referenced a whole lot in this book, which is weird. Cause like, if you're gonna reference anybody, you're gonna reference Annabeth. <laughs> There's a reference to the Apostle John. <laughs> which I thought was really funny. This is my nitpick. There's this whole story about this guy who's, th 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 let me know if you've heard this one before. There's this whole story, this myth about this guy whose lifeline was a piece of wood. And not once does Percy reference Frank, which made me think, does he know? Who does know? I know Hazel knows. I'm pretty sure Jason and Piper end up knowing. Did they just not tell Percy and Annabeth? Or Leo? Well, they no, Leo knows for sure. There's no reference to Frank. And I don't know why. You could read this while reading Heroes of Olympus if you wanted to. But again, Heroes of Olympus is kind of long. Um, next up, we have Demigods and Magicians. Now, this takes place after Heroes of Olympus. And if you're like me, at the end of your copy of Her some of the Heroes of Olympus books, it will have parts of the Demigod and Magician stories. It's when Percy and Annabeth um, meet the Kane kids. So it's great, it's a great crossover. However, one of them, one of the short stories, don't know which one, did not reread anything for the purposes of this. I have yet to reread the Kane Chronicles from the last time I was supposed to, or Trials of Apollo, because we'll get into it. So there is a reference to someone. I don't remember if it's like the Argo 2 or Tartarus, or like they name drop Leo. I think they name drop Leo. No, they can't name drop Leo because canonically they think he's dead. They name drop someone where it's like, oh yeah, my friend Frank or Hazel or something. Like they say the name of someone, like Percy in his head says the name of someone. So canonically it takes place after, which is kind of a spoiler because again, the whole Tartarus plot and the fact that like Percy and Annabeth could have died. So that's kind of a spoiler that they're alive because they met the Kane kids and they also referenced Leo but it would have to take place after they're off the Argo 2 because otherwise they wouldn't have met anybody. Because, okay, <laughs> I don't need to go into the specifics, but I'm going to. So they could have, it, the Kane Chronicles thing could have taken place here if it didn't reference Leo or whoever. It could take place here if it didn't reference Leo, but it can't take place anywhere during here because Percy's not there and then Percy's still not there and then Percy's back, but they're not back at camp. There's like no downtime between beginning of Mark of Athena to the end of Blood of Olympus. Like it is go, go, go. So it has to take place here. I could have Googled this again, um, but it's one of those things where it's like, I could kind of infer it myself. And here is where we are leaving behind release order. Um, because next up is Chalice of the Gods. So I have a funny story about Chalice of the Gods and let me go grab something real quick. So I read Chalice of the Gods as it released. I had pre-ordered the last book. I pre-ordered Chalice of the Gods, was super ready. Um, I had made a list of things I thought were gonna happen because in my head I had not been thinking about the timeline of everything Even though again, I read the last release the Chalice of the Gods Takes place before Trials of Apollo and here's how I know I'm pretty sure in the first Trials of Apollo book Which is the one I've read the most because I cannot get through that series for the life of me I have read the whole series. I've read the whole series. Love the first book. Love the last book Couldn't get through the second book the first time I read it So I reread the first book then read the second book. That's why I read the first one the most I'm pretty sure Percy's sister is in there. Like she's referenced. Um, and in, and you can see on here, I have listed Sally, Paul, and Estelle. Is that her name? I'm really bad at pronouncing names. Estelle, um, she is not in the book. And I was like waiting for it. Like, wait, where's his sister? Where's his sister? Where are they referencing his sister? And then there's a scene, spoiler for Chalice of the Gods, very minor, but it is a nice scene 
<laughs> Sally and Paul are talking kind of cryptically and all of a sudden I was like, oh, she's just now pregnant. Got it. So that takes place before Charles and Paul though. Here's my timeline. Again, I like to take breaks between the five books. You could read The King Chronicles or Magnus Chase whenever you want. I read Magnus Chase after I've read Heroes of Olympus. Uh, but it does canonically take place after Chalice of the Gods because again, Percy has a sister. Um, you might be like, what does Percy have to do with this book? I'll talk about it. So the first Magnus Chase book, Magnus has died. <laughs> I'd say spoilers, but that's like the name of the first chapter is I Plunge to My Death. Editing Abby again. I Plunge to My Death is a chapter title from The Lightning Thief. It's also the name of one of the episodes in the show. So I don't know how I got that wrong. Um, it's good morning, you're going to die or something is the Magnus Chase one. So, you know, he's dead. Um, I'll leave you reading the book to figure out how that works, but he is dead. And at the end of the book, he runs into Annabeth and she's kind of like, aren't you supposed to be dead? What? I thought this was weird circumstances. Cause you know, she would look at a body and be like, that's not him, you know? She, she's like, this is even kind of weird. So it makes sense that you're alive. So he talks to her. And in the beginning of the second book, he's like, yeah, like apparently this this whole thing with the Greek gods, but I'm dead and in Norse mythology, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and at the end of the second book, he's about to go on a quest and he needs help. And he's talking to his cousin, Annabeth Chase, about how he needs help. And she's like, oh, that's fine. You'll just get to meet my boyfriend, Percy. So we begin this book with Percy. So I, it has to be read after Chalice of the Gods, timeline wise because he already has a sister. He talks about his sister to Magnus. And my favorite thing about this, and this is something I'm gonna talk about when I finally get to doing the second two books in the Red Queen series, which that video will be a lot shorter than the first one, I promise. Um, Magnus is like thinking of all the reasons like the world deserves to like keep on living and like that they shouldn't have Armageddon, which Ragnarok, because it's North Norse mythology. And he's like, yeah, like my friend deserves to have the future that she envisioned with this guy that she likes. Um, and then he's like, and Percy's sister deserves a chance to grow up. Percy's sister deserves a chance to grow up. That's not even. It's either the, the Hammer of Thor or the Ship of the Dead has a reference to Trials of Apollo where it's like, oh yeah, those Roman emperors, they're trying to take over blah, 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 blah. It's the same thing as the Cain Chronicles where it's like, in case you're wondering where we are in the Percy Jackson timeline, here's where we are. Uh, which again, I think is funny. Now Trials of Apollo. All five of these are in order. I cannot name all the Trials of Apollo books. I can name, like without looking, I can name all the original, all the Heroes of Olympus, and most of the Cain Chronicles in order. If I stop and think, I can do Magnus Chase 100%. Like I do know the names of those. Could not tell you Trials of Apollo. Here's my problem with Trials of Apollo. I don't like Apollo as a character. It's one of those things where it's like, he has a lot of growth to do, but like there's also five books. So it takes a while for the growth to set in. And like, you can never really tell if you can trust Meg. And I don't know, I just never really resonated with her as a character. I don't hate her as a character. I just never resonated with her as a character. So like, it took me a minute to actually read through book two, even though it had Leo and Calypso, who I love, they don't have as much screen time as freaking Apollo. So it took me forever to get through that book, which I'm kind of glad I did because again, like some of the other character stuff that happens, I love, not this. I said I wasn't gonna talk about it. I am gonna talk about it. Rick, what? I will find you. What? I, listen, I'm not gonna talk about who my favorite or least favorite people in the seven are. Um, I know most people's least favorite is the one who dies. Um, not my least favorite. So why is he dead, Rick? Why is he dead? And why am I crying about it? And why did I forget, not forget that he died, but like forget that it was a thing that could be brought up. And so when you wrote the sun and the star and Nico's all, oh my gosh, my friend is dead. I started crying. Sun and the star goes after trials of Apollo. It's set up at the end of the last one. I don't know. Most of them are. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the timeline and how they're set up. Here's how everything goes. So at the end of the last Olympian, we have another prophecy that is given and that's the prophecy of the seven, which leads to heroes of Olympus. And my favorite thing is they give the prophecy and Percy's like, are you kidding me? And Annabeth's like, oh, it could be anyone. <laughs> and then he goes missing. I love it here. At the end of Blood of Olympus, Apollo gets punished by Zeus and everyone's kind of like, it's not really his fault, but like, ah, uh, wonder what happened to him. He'll be fine. He's a god. What's the worst that could happen? Jump cut to, that's not the right book, Trials of Apollo. <laughs> and Apollo is now mortal <laughs> as punishment. So those all lead to each other. Again, this one has references to Percy's sister, which is why it specifically goes here on the timeline. 
This one doesn't really matter where you read it on the timeline, unless you are also reading Demigods and Magicians, which takes place after Heroes of Olympus. So you can read these here, or you could read them here. It doesn't really matter. Just before or after Heroes of Olympus. That's that's pretty much where it is. Um, I forgot to print out both of these, which is embarrassing because I do own both of these, and I don't own all the ones up here, so I don't know why. <laughs> the two I forgot to print out are two of the ones I own. Um, so we have the Kane Chronicles Survival Guide, which I have read. I do not remember the contents in the slightest. And then we have Nine from the Nine Realms. Is it nine? Is there nine short stories? I don't remember this book. There's short stories from the Magnus Chase series and it does take place after, I think? I don't remember the short stories super well. I know there's one involving pants. That's very specific, but if you've read it, you might know what I'm talking about. And it's not really clear on if like relationship stuff that happened at the end of Ship of the Dead is like canon and they're together or they're not. And it wasn't very clear in the book whether that was true or false or whatever anyways. So like you could read Nine from the Nine Realms at any point, I think, um, but I would read them after Magnus Chase. King Chronicles Survival Guide, again, read wherever, I think. I don't remember though, so probably best to read it after. You might be like, Abby, that's all of the works, except for the Demigod Survival Guide, which I think is the same thing as the King Chronicles Survival Guide, and you can read that anywhere during the first series. I have not read it. I wasn't about to Google it, and I only remembered it existed when I got the images for all of these and saw it and went, oh crap, too late. I think you can read that one anywhere. So you might be thinking, Abby, that's all the releases. That's all the releases. What is there left to talk about? The Wrath of the Triple Goddess. That's the name of the sucker, right? It's not out, so I don't want to know. This is the next release. Um, if you didn't read Chalice of the Gods, I'm gonna give you a brief overview. It's Percy, to get to the Roman college, needs three letters of recommendation from gods for, for quests he's done. Um, but they cannot be quests he's already done. He has to do three new quests. And he gets a letter of recommendation at the end of um, Chalice of the Gods. He only gets one. And this book was not set to be a standalone, but like it was kind of hinted like, oh, this is a standalone. Like it's not gonna be a series. Um, and then everyone was immediately like, but he only got one. And there's two more he has to get. So there's gonna be more, right? And then he announced the second one and I was like, right. Which was already like half announced. Like it was like out there, but like he himself had not come out and said, hey, this book is coming out here. Here's the title. Here's the cover until like this month. But here's my thoughts. So Chalice of the Gods takes place after Heroes of Olympus, obviously. There is vague references to Heroes of Olympus. If you have not read Heroes of Olympus or you can't because you're a young child and your parent doesn't want you reading things that have certain elements in them, I understand and I do respect your parents for that. Don't worry about it. There's like vague references to things. Like I've, I've, I've referenced the Tartarus thing. It's like this big thing that happens. Um, you're not gonna be missing much. It's more like a, this thing happened, long story. And like you move on. I read it. I read Chalice of the Gods and I've read all of these. And I was like, okay, got it. That's funny. My editor who has not read Heroes of Olympus for the previously referenced reasons was like, was like, yeah, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. So I think that's great. Um, I do think it is awful that she has not got to experience Leo Valdez as a character. That being said, it is not referencing anything like major wise. Um, and I don't think the next one or the one after that will, meaning it'll probably take place here, tentatively. However, Rick Riordan is very good at fan service. He is very good at being like, I'm gonna give the people what they want. You know, for example, Trials of Apollo, probably everyone's least favorite series. Again, I already said that the King Chronicles is the most boring to me. Like it's not the one that like draws me in the most. The only reason the Trials of Apollo book could draw me in is because every book features a former character, okay? You start with the Hidden Oracle. I am reading these off of the paper because again, I do not remember the names off the top of my head. Start with the Hidden Oracle. Percy's in it like twice. There's like two different scenes where like he shows up and um, Will and Nico and other characters we know at camp like Rachel are also there. The Dark Prophecy has aforementioned um, Leo and Calypso. Burning Maze has Grover, has a reference to Piper. I think she's there in the book. I've read this one once, so don't quote me on this. She's in the book, but she's not like a major character. I might be wrong on that. And it has Jason and nothing bad happens to him. And then Tyrants 2 has Reyna and Frank and Hazel. 
And then Tower of Nero goes back to camp. So we have Rachel, Will, and Nico again. And maybe other people? I don't remember. Oh, I forgot to say this earlier, but when all of these are like setting up one after another. End of Trials of Apollo. This is the part I forgot to say, so I'm adding this in now. Um, end, of, end of Tower of Nero has a reference to uh, what would become the Sun and the Star. Like, reading it when it released, it was very much like, he's gonna have to do this thing and it's gonna be hard, but we're not gonna say what it is but like it's a big deal and like it might be its own book. Um, we'll talk about, we'll talk about all of that in a second. Maybe at the post credit scene, see you there. I always do post credit scenes by the way, if you're watching. I've been doing them for a while. Even some of my vlogs have them, like it's a big deal to me. These two are very non fan service-y. So all of these have fan service stuff. These are not fan service. It is literally just our original trio. I had on my list, my aforementioned list of things I thought might happen in Chalice of the Gods. I was like, I want a reference to Clarice and I want a reference to Rachel Elizabeth there. Cause those are my girls. I like them as characters. And now that like, we're not in the original series, I'd like to see them pop in. We did not see either. I think there's a reference to one of them. No, there's a reference to Juniper. We don't see her either. We don't see Camp either, which again, I'm fine with. We'd have to reference that certain characters are dead from, you know, the last Olympian. But like, but like also I think there's things that like could happen. Be like there's, there's the reasons we could have them at camp and have it feel somewhat normal. Like the Stoll brothers are still there, right? Fingers crossed. Um, but I do also like that these stand on their own. However, and this is a slight spoiler. This is a slight spoiler. In the Chalice of the Gods, things are getting real. And it's not like the end of the world, like everything else is like literally all of these books are like, it's the end of the world, um, except for Sun and Star. That's not the end of the world, but it is also pain. So, you know, um, it's not the end of the world, but it's big for Percy. And there is a scene, there's like throughout the book, there's just like this like, sprinkling of him getting anxiety and getting really bogged down and what if this doesn't work out and what if I don't get what I want? Not like, not what if I don't get what I want, but like what if he doesn't get to go to college with Annabeth? Big deal. Remi mind you, canonically, we know he's gone to college with Annabeth because I think it's referenced in one of the Trials of Apollo books that I've only read once that like they're on their way to college and like they couldn't help even if they wanted to and like we don't want to ruin their happiness. But then in The Sun and the Star, Nico and Will like FaceTime with them. It's not FaceTime because obviously maybe it is FaceTime. Annabeth has a computer, but they wouldn't have a computer. Anyways, they talk to them. I'm pretty sure it's Iris message. message. They Iris message them. Uh, at college. So the two of them are at college. So we already know that they get to college and that he's gonna get all three of these. So like the stakes are very low as a reader, but for Percy, they feel really big and he's having panic attacks and it's not 100% addressed. There's this nice scene with his mom. Again, I've read this one once, so grain of salt. Um, it's nice scene with his mom where she's like, everything's gonna be okay. And he's kind of like, yeah, maybe you're right, but it doesn't feel like it's like fully resolved. So now that we're getting two more of those, I think we might go deeper into that. So it, it, it'll feel, less like just a fun adventure there's no stakes and like the stakes will get bigger with each book for percy not like for the world um that's my hope so i'm wondering and hear me out if it does if they all stay here i'm fine with that i would love for all three of them to be here because then i don't have to remake this video and talk about where the timeline is i'm gonna get hypothetical for a minute just in case the timeline changes because i have this idea and i like this idea um Chalice of the Gods here, taking this off temporarily. Trials of Apollo, the communications go down. They cannot iris message anyone. I would like for that to be referenced in the Wrath of the Triple Goddess. Because then it'd be like, look, okay, this is the Trials of Apollo stuff. It can either happen right before he comes or after he comes would be even funnier. Um, because remember at the end of the Hidden Oracle, Leo comes back and I remember my list one of my lists, like things that I thought was gonna happen is they're gonna reference all seven of the main characters. And when I realized where this takes place on the timeline, I was like, oh, they've referenced all of them. Well, all seven, <laughs> Percy and other two, so five. Of the five other people, they have referenced all but one of them. They did not reference Leo because canonically they think that Leo is dead. And I'm not mad that they did not reference Leo because then it would be like this weird, we're not referencing Heroes of Olympus, but like we're making references to characters but also one of them's dead and we just referenced that he's dead. But if you haven't read that, you're kind of like, whoa, spoiler. Like that would be a whole thing. Um, I want the, I want this to take place just, just personally for me so I can have my reference of Leo. I want it to take place like right after the Hidden Oracle where like things are going down, but both Percy and Annabeth are just kind of like, yeah, there's this whole thing with Apollo, 
long story, we don't want to talk about it. But our friend Leo's back. So like they just have like a random reference to Leo. That'd be great. It'd also be great. Um, either again, this the second one or the third one, the eventual third one. The eventual third one could do the same thing where like it's later in the series and like we reference this thing with Apollo and Leo. And then we would know that the sister has been born. Like, cause I'm pretty sure we're gonna get to see that in one of these. Um, that's my best guess at least. Is that we're gonna get to see like the sister as of like, not being inside of Sally character and I think that would be fun if like during that timeline stuff it's just like happening at the same time as Trials of Apollo but we're not talking about it because we don't want to but we're gonna make a reference to Leo that's what I'm thinking also again with the aforementioned Percy panic attack thing I think things getting more serious like there's this thing with Apollo that's also stressing him out even though he's not involved it's still stressing him out hypothetically I think that would be fun, um, especially if, I said I wasn't gonna talk about it, but here I am talking about it again. Especially if, so if we did the second book around where the communications go down, like things are getting deeper for Percy and things are happening in the demigod world, even though they're not in that side of the demigod world right now, you get to the third book. And if the third book took place after the burning maze, like, again, I don't know where the timeline is for them at college with the burning maze, so I don't know if they're still in New York or if they're headed to college, but if it takes place, cause I, we see Rome, we see new Rome, sorry, in the Tyrant's Tomb, book four of Trials of Apollo. If, this is just turned into a rant by the way. If we see new Rome and we don't see Percy and Annabeth in that book, that means they're not there yet, right? That's my assumption. That's how I'm understanding this. So like they leave before Tower of Nero is my assumption. Cause again, they're, they weren't in the New York stuff side of things, unless it's just like, oh, we don't want to bother them. Which, good, don't. They've been through so much. But they're not here. That means they're not there. That means they're not in New Rome yet. So, like, technically, we could put the third book here, have a vague reference to, hey, a friend of mine who we lived on the same ship with for how many, however long that was. Like, Annabeth has known Jason longer than Percy has. But, like, I think the two of them just being, like, heavily depressed by that while per Percy's having this panic attack and still hasn't gotten his third recommendation letter, like that could add so much more depth, but also not necessary. It could just be here. Um, this is the official timeline. Let's go over it. So we start here with the original series, the Demigod Files, which you can read at any point. Then after the series, read Percy Jackson's Great Gods. I don't know if that's canonical, but that's just my opinion. In between reading um, <laughs> Heroes of Olympus and the original Percy Jackson series. You can read the King Chronicles and the Survival Guide, which I don't remember. So honestly, I don't even know if you should read it. I recommend reading the Demigod Diaries between the first two Heroes of Olympus books because after the second book, you kind of just want to go from book to book to book. After Heroes of Olympus, you can read Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes. There is reference to some of these characters. It is super fun. Then you can read Demigods and Magicians, which is kind of a spoiler for Heroes of Olympus because Percy and Annabeth are alive. Then you will read Chalice of the Gods, and I'm thinking this is where the triple goddess will go. Um, then you can read the Magnus Chase series before reading Trials of Apollo, or you can read it after. It does not matter. After Trials of Apollo is where the sun and the star goes. That is the full timeline. Anyways, for those of y'all wondering how I spend Sunday afternoons, it's thinking about the Percy Jackson series, apparently. I have something to talk about in my post credit scenes, and this is what I have to talk about. For those of y'all who follow Rick on Instagram and have since pre-COVID, there was a poll, right? It was like one of those like click one of the three answers things where he was like, what book would you wanna see next? Would you wanna see a standalone book featuring the original trio, a book for Nico and Will, the thing that was referenced at the end of Trials of Apollo, would you wanna see that book? Or would you wanna see a standalone Reina series? I'd like to point out that we have gotten two of those three things. We have the original trio books and we have the Will and Nico book. I don't know why I'm saying Will's name first, like he's a bigger character, that's okay. We have not gotten a Reina book. Also, I don't know which of these books it's in. I think it's in Trials of Apollo somewhere. There's a scene where Chiron says, like, if you excuse me, I have a meeting with a head and a cat. And the floating head is that one god character from Magnus Chase, and the cat is a different god from, from the Cain Chronicles. What happened in that meeting? And I got, was thinking about this, I was thinking about making this video last night and I realized the Reina of it all. If Reina got her own book, would it be like 
a normal person, like a, a mortal-ish person, because she is a demigod, a demigod in the middle of like this big thing. It, like, it sounded like a potential crossover or just like a fun little reference. But if it was like an actual book, wouldn't it make sense if Chiron is the representative of the Greeks, the floating head is the representative of the Norse mythology, the cat, I don't remember her name, I'm so sorry, is the, I think it starts with a B, that might be wrong is the representative of the Egyptian mythology, and then Reina is the um, representative of the Roman mythology. Like, I'm not saying if we got a Reina book, which I would I would want that, I would read that. If we got a book for Reina, I would want it to be like this giant crossover thing or even have any crossover references. But also, I would not be mad if that's what we got. Anyways, that's just my brain farting out another thought. 